G'day humans, Chris Stead here, got a bit of a review for you. I have in my possession the new Fujifilm X-S20, the new entry in the X-Series. Now we're starting to see a few of these cameras emerge in the mirrorless space, which are basically cameras that are trying to encourage those who have got into vlogging, uh, who are using their phones or a GoPro, something like that, and upgrading to something a bit more serious, looking for a bit more quality. So I guess it's that first run of influencers and people who are getting into that scene and now starting to kind of push the limits of those types of devices and looking for something with a bit more class, a bit more to it, such as this. So we've seen Sony, we've seen Nikon, we're seeing Canon uh, into this space, Olympus into this space, and now we've also got Fujifilm, have got the X-S20. Now, this is a follow-up to the X-S10, uh, which came out in late 2020. That was also uh, pushing into that vlogging space uh, as this one is here. So I'm gonna take you on a bit of a tour of this camera itself and also uh, use it and show you what it looks like in action so you can see what it's like. Now, in terms of the design, if you've seen the S10, you honestly, you would not be able to tell the difference between the two just looking at them. In fact, if it wasn't for the S20 here and a vlog option on the dial at the top, they're pretty much exactly the same. Now, it's a little bit different from the usual, I guess, uh, old school retro feel you might know from some of the broader Fuji camera range. It's a bit more uh, in tune with kind of like the DLSRs that we see from you know, your Nikons and your Canons, that type of thing. It's a bit more of a design tweak there, probably to make it more familiar for people who are thinking about upgrading to a more traditional DLSR feel, uh, considering the market they're going for. Uh, I quite like the design. Uh, it's still got a kind of a metal-y feel to it, like a heavy solid feel to it. It's got this fantastic grip here at the front, gives you a lot of hand space to use like this. Uh, and it's um, got a lot of functions on top, easy to deal with. And I've actually found the UI, and I predominantly use Canons just for my own pleasure when I'm not doing reviews. And uh, I found actually found this quite intuitive quite over the years, mostly thanks to this large touch screen on the back and the way that, that the UI operates on that. It's quite easy to, once you kind of get your head around what the options are available to actually dive in and start using those options, uh, becomes pretty quick to kind of get your head around and, and I'm happy with that. Uh, the one thing that I guess doesn't work in its favour is the fact that it's quite hard to, uh, you can obviously stick a mount on the, uh, uh, something a handle on the bottom to hold on to while you're vlogging in a selfie mode or sticking up on a stand so you can get like this. But to do anything in that kind of portrait mode if you're predominantly looking at shorts, reels, uh, TikTok, that type of thing, Instagram, uh, is going to be quite difficult. It's not really a natural holding position like that. Uh, and even though you've got the screen and you can uh, bring it out and turn it around, which is great. So you can do, you kind of get yourself in selfie mode like that, you know, and you can do it like that as well. It's just adding to that kind of awkwardness of holding it. So that's one thing that necessarily doesn't work in its favor as a vlogging camera. And I don't really know how they could have adapted this. If you've seen my video on a power shot, uh, V10 from Canon, you'll know how Canon's just radically gone for a different approach to try and hit that vlogging market and provide that flexibility. So anyway, let's, uh, I'll just take you on a bit of a tour of the specs, in particular where this is upgraded from the S10. Like I said, that came out in late 2020, I think November from memory. And this one is due out in June 2023, so a fair gap between the two. And you know, as you can probably tell from the lack of design change here, uh, the, uh, it's, it's more of an iteration here than an evolution. So what we're seeing is an improvement to the internal specs over that S10. Uh, but with that has also come, it's important to note, a significant price increase. So this is up to a $2,349, I think it is here in Australia, just for the body. There is a kit lens, I think it's 18 to 40 off the top of my head. Uh, I'll put that in the description, double check that. Uh, and that goes for about 2,450, I think, here in Australia. So not much extra to get the kit with the lens, and obviously you're just gonna have to do that really, unless you've already got some X-mount lenses on hand. Uh, now, by comparison, you're looking at about the 1750 mark from memory for the S10. So you're looking at significant price increase there, which you're gonna to wanna to see that replicated in the specs, which we'll go through in a second. I did also wanna point out that the lens that's on here as well has been announced alongside the camera. It is an eight millimeter fixed uh, F3.5 lens, and it's ultra wide angle. It's a $1,450 lens, uh, and it's really for this, 
but it's even too wide angle for this almost in my opinion um, and it's not much good for anything else unless you're looking at that really wide angle stuff something with a bit of zoom i think is going to be much more useful for most people uh, than this particular lens but that's just they've sent this to me because it's coming out at the same time as this uh, and when i show you some footage of this in action that's what you're going to see you're going to see me using this lens so that just explains the lens for you. Okay, so let's just dive into the specs for a little bit. So one of the biggest improvements I think that most people are gonna, especially if you've moved from the S10 up to the S20 is gonna be the battery life. So you're looking at a, more than double the length on the battery. So where the, with the first uh, S10 there shot about 330 odd shots, this shoots 800. So you can see a significant difference in the battery there. Uh, we're also seeing high resolution as you might expect. So. It was 4K, you can now get up to 6.2K, that's at 30 frames per second. 4K was 30 frames a second in the S10, that's now 60 frames a second, so decent leap up there, uh, and you can get HD at 240. Now, the recording uh, is also up from 8-bit 420 color to 10-bit 422, uh, and that's like that's inbuilt as well, so that's into the internal memory. That's not through HDMI outputs. So you could only get that um, kind of range with the S10 if you were doing HDMI output. So in this case, that's just internal. So that's a good uh, step up as well. We're also seeing the X Processor 5 here used for the processing engine. So that's up from the X Processor 4. So you're looking at a bit uh, better there. But what one of the one of the you know one of the provides one of the big things that provides for me is the AI subject detection autofocus. So that's going to pull out from your image. Uh, the AI is going to determine what it is you're trying to focus on and focus on it even though it's moving. And you can set that to automated mode as well. So that's going to automate for you if you want. Or you can actually go in there and choose like pet, for example, or car, or something like that, which you can do through the settings. Uh, elsewhere, you're looking at pretty much the same CMOS uh, uh, 4 sensor, the X-Trans sensor. Same 26 megapixel uh, stills on that as well. You can uh, find a headphone jack, which is great if you want to plug in some external mics, which you're probably going to want to do. Uh, the film simulation modes are back, they're pretty good. There's only one more addition, there's 19, this time there's 18 last time. 491 grams. Look, the inbuilt um, image stabilization, that's a big thing. Uh, seven stop this time, or up to seven stop, it's important to say up to, you're not always going to get that, but up to seven stop image stabilization, stabilization that's up from six with the S10. Uh, you still got your five axis. Uh, in body image stabilization there. The touch screen's been amped up. The LCD touch screen's up to 1.83 million dots, up from 1.04 million in the S10. And you can use this as a webcam as well. And what's interesting with the webcam is that when you use the webcam, you can still use your film simulation modes and that type of thing as well. Now, there's no change to the uh, electronic viewfinder. It's exactly the same as we had before. And like I mentioned before, there's one new addition at the top, which is a actual dedicated vlog mode. Now, what this really does is just put the camera in a space where it's gonna work uh, in that selfie mode uh, as, as good as possible. That includes being able to do like an image blur on the background, uh, eye tracking. There's a few kind of little, features you can pull out and activate on or off and that just using the touch screen but really it's just going to set it best for that selfie mode experience that's what the the vlog is going to do all right so i will now go and uh, just show you a little bit of this actually in action it's going to wander in my backyard move out of some light situations just so you can see how it adapts how it goes and how that microphone sounds i'm not going to um put in an external mic for this so i just want you to see what it's going to be like out of the box uh, and also, if, you have, if you're not familiar with the Fuji as well, I think this is really cool, the inbuilt flash. So if you just look that up like that. Now, that, for example, the Canons don't have that. You've got to buy a separate flash. And it's really lovely the way that design works. Really, really nice design they've got there going on. And that does add a bit of extra flexibility that you don't get with some of the other cameras in this mirrorless interchangeable lens uh, mode. All right, let's go in and have a look at a demo. All right, so let's go for a little bit of wander. So I've attached a grip to the bottom of the camera now and I'm walking around as you might do if you were vlogging outdoors. I'm going to do indoors as well in a second. But just a bit of a, I guess, uh, demo for you just to see how it performs so you can make your own judgment. I'm going to walk through under some trees. There's a bit of shade and lightning into the, uh, lighting differences into the sun, into some dark rooms, just so you can get an idea. This is just using the standard mics uh, that come with it, not any external mic like I normally would. And uh, also, I've just got it set on face detection, and I've got it set on background blur, although that doesn't seem to be blurring it too much. Uh, so that's, I think that's probably more for product. 
it does have a product blur mode which I didn't reference uh, sorry a product specific mode when you're in the vlogging setting uh, which I didn't mention before now as I said originally this is an 8, uh, eight millimeter fixed lens this is not the lens you get in the kit just the lens they've sent me during the demo period uh, and the 18 mil lens obviously is going to be a bit closer uh, this is actually pretty awesome having such an ultra wide lens but like I said it's probably not fitting for most circumstances. I think the 18mm to 40 is actually going to be more useful for most users. I think this is much more specific use case but still you're seeing a lot right? It's pretty cool. Now let's move into the lighting here and let's see how the audio changes when I move it away from myself. If you can see any differences in the sound as I go from left and to right and to right and to left. <laughs> see how that picks that up all right so I'm gonna go for a wander now inside one thing I was thinking about you know with the Fuji how it's got the inbuilt flash which is great so like I said I, earlier I, I use Canon's a lot and they don't have that you gotta buy the flash separately uh, and that's a kind of a bulky accessory that sits on top so it makes it hard to pack blah 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 this one's kind of really nicely built in it'd be great if you could just have the flash just turn on as a torch, um, which I'm going to show you in a sec because I've already tested this out. But as I go inside the house here and we start moving to the lighting, and you can see it's pretty good there at adjusting to the brightness, um, quicker than the V10, that's for sure, and uh, better quality in low light than the V10. So you can see here I'm just walking into a bedroom which is actually quite dark, but you wouldn't be able to tell at all. It looks really bright uh, on the screen, at least that I'm looking at now, but it's actually quite dark in this room. But if I walk into a really dark place, like the wardrobe here, okay, you start to lose me. Which makes sense, right? But I'd love it if you could, in this situation, have um, just have the flash be able to turn on as a torch and just light that up for you. Uh, like we saw on the GoPro, uh, with its kind of light that goes onto the shoe at the top and just allows you to have, have create light in dark situations that's just permanently on, not just a flash for stills. Uh, Maybe you can do that, but I couldn't find it in the settings. And uh, that's something maybe they could look at for next time. Anyway, there you go. There's a demo. So there you go anyway. Those are my thoughts on the Fujifilm XS20, which has been announced in May 2023 on May 24 and it is coming out in June 2023. I don't have a more specific release date than that right now. I'll put it in the description once it gets announced uh, in case you are watching this after uh, that is announced. Now, in terms of whether or not this is right for you, it's quite a step up. I think when you're looking at a $2,499, well, $2, I just double checked that price then, for the experience of a vlogging camera, uh, that's pretty a lot of money and obviously it's versatile. Uh, if you've got a couple of X-mount lenses already, that's going to give you a lot more value out of this than you're possibly going to get with just getting the kit lens and this out of the bag. Uh, but you know what you can get out of your standard phone, a GoPro, PowerShot V10 even, uh, yes it's not as high as quality as this, that's absolutely true, uh, but you can buy three GoPro Hero 11s for the same price as this, even more than three. So that's something to consider definitely, but if you're just not getting what you want out of that kind of device, if you want more flexibility in terms of the lenses and you can get from say a GoPro uh, and just a bit sharper uh, all around that, that extra AI processing ability, that autofocus ability, that image body stabilization, then uh, definitely this camera packs some heat uh, and could be worth an investment for you. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm Chris Stead, until next time, you. Thank you.